Wonderful. Welcome, everybody. I'm Dr. Craig Wiener, and I'm Alina Frank. Wife, partner, business partner, co-trainer, all of those things. Yeah. And we really um, have an honor to be able to introduce you to Dr. Adriana Popescu, a licensed psychologist in California. So welcome. Thank First. you. Thanks, Thanks, guys, for having me. Good. It's wonderful to have you. We've, we've had the opportunity to speak before uh, based on some of the research that you have performed with regard to EFT and working in the clinic that you work in, that you run and manage in California. And in that conversation, we were talking about trauma and different ways of working with people having addictions. And, and one of the things that came up was the work that you had talked about with regard to brain spotting. Mm -hmm. And so we're conducting this series, as you know, to really inform people not to look at superiority, and this isn't a study to compare one versus the other, but it really is to educate and to illustrate for people that have heard about different somatic and trauma-informed techniques. What are those? I, I want to know a little bit more than just maybe the definition I can find on Wikipedia or, or et cetera, yeah. and people that have experience with both. So that's really what stimulated the series. Yes. So let's start with, with what your history and background as it applies to EFT and um, brain spotting, which we're going to cover today. Yeah, that's a good start. Sure. I was really fortunate to discover energy psychology pretty early on. Um, I was still in graduate school here in uh, Bay Area, California, and uh, found a flyer one day in the student lounge for the, I think it was second annual ASAP energy psychology conference. So I went to San Diego had uh, my whole universe blew open, um, learned EFT, learned BSET Free Fast. That was another one I was actually work quite a bit with um, and a whole bunch of different modalities. And at that time, I myself was really, really sick with what turned out to be Lyme disease and chronic fatigue syndrome. So I was already looking at these mind body more energy-based kind of techniques because Western medicine wasn't really able to help me. Um, so I had started at this around the same time I discovered energy psychology. I was working with an acupuncturist who had learned NET, neuroemotional technique. And that was really helping me to um, make more progress with my Lyme disease because I had a lot of unresolved trauma and things from my upbringing. My parents were children in World War II in a country that became communist. So there was all this intergenerational trauma, things I had never considered could possibly be playing a role in my own illness. And as I started, you know, using these techniques on myself and I was starting to get better, then I wanted to work with clients. And so started going to trainings, getting different certifications, um, and for many years, uh, loved the work that I was doing with EP. And then I want to say it was maybe 2017 or 18 that um, before the pandemic, for sure, that David Grand, who created Brain Spotting, which is a derivative of EMDR, right? For folks who've heard of that, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing therapy, long time trauma treatment that's pretty well accepted these days. It wasn't in the early days. Um, but, uh, he developed brain spotting from EMDR and he came to an ASAP conference and did a one day workshop. And I was so impressed with, um, what he was doing that I started dabbling a little bit with it in my practice. And then right before the pandemic kicked in, I did the first level one training and started using it at the drug and alcohol rehab where I'm the clinical director loved the results we were getting, decided um, we were going to have all our therapists trained in brain spotting. I was already training them all and using EFT um, and some of the Be Set Free Fast and other techniques with our clients who are dealing with co-occurring disorders, um, you know, co-occurring mental health diagnoses with substance abuse and trauma is our primary specialty as far as that goes. So it's the perfect population to to use these techniques with because their trauma is physiological, not just psychological. And CBT is great, but it's not, you, you can't work with somebody in the middle of a panic attack and do like a thought record to challenge the evidence they have for and against the fact that they're, you know, not having a heart attack and about to die. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why, um, you know, we really feel that the cognitive somatic practices of which I would put brain spotting in that category Mm -hmm. um, are so important if you're going to be working with people who do have trauma. Okay. Okay. I I, I really didn't know that it, it came from EMDR. Oh yeah, that's I actually think. it was a it was a off branching. 
really. Yeah. So why don't why don't we just go there first and yeah. be able to say, you know, to describe how the visual gaze, what it is. I mean, just describe for people that don't know what brain spotting is. Yeah. Yeah, so with brain spotting, you know, it's much less structured than EMDR. Um, it does have to do with, uh, you know, eye fixation rather than eye movement. EMDR is more about kind of following your eyes left to right. There's a lot of left brain, right brain stuff happening. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, brain spotting is fixed gaze. So essentially, the person you activate much like you would with EFT, you activate the issue, they talk about it, they bring up that energy, you notice where are you feeling it in your body, the suds, how intense is it, zero to 10. And then you have a pointer, I actually don't have one in front of me, you take, imagine this is like a laser pointer, and you would use that to help find where in their visual field, they feel all of that sensation or emotion or whatever it is the most. Okay. And that's if you're going for activation. Uh, there are other setups you can do that are less activating, but that's usually where you start is activation. And then the person fixes their gaze there and material just starts to come up. It could be memories of past traumas. I've had people um, reclaim uh, repressed memories, for example, uh, might come up, or they might just feel a lot of different things in their bodies. They might cry. They might feel the need to move around. I'm very so mad. I've had a lot of physical injuries. So when I'm brain spotting, I'm actually like unwinding in my body. Um, and then at the same time, you don't have to, but it's optional to use uh, music. It's called biolateral sounds. So, and, it, and it's doing left brain, right brain stimulation. And it's also working with the inner ear muscles. We know from like polyvagal theory, right? That the audiology changes when someone gets into a fight, flight, or freeze response. So you've got this music that kind of sounds like it's, it's like spa kind of music, but it's like, it sounds like the volume is going up and down or going in and out one ear and the other. And that is also activating then the vagus nerve to help us get out of that fight flight response, just the same way that the ocular nerve directly connects back to the vagus nerve. So you're using those connections to access um, the amygdala and and deactivate, similar to EFT, right? Deactivate that stress response um, and allow people to have different perspectives. Like I've had one of my first clients was um, in the fires, you know, the California fires we had the first year and in paradise. And she was dr literally driving out of town as trees are burning on top of her, lost everything. And by the end of that session, she had processed and released so much of the trauma piece that she was able to get to that post-traumatic growth space where she was like, and all of that was horrible and I wouldn't trade any of it because it's gotten me to where I am today. I've had a spiritual awakening since then and you know all the things. So even within one session, she was able to get to that more um, positive place and not have that um, trauma response to even just thinking about the experience. So, so what I heard is that on one hand, brain spotting can be you know, I don't want to compare it yet to EFT, but in a sense, it helps them tune into material that's needing attention. Yes. Whether it be traumatic adversity, whatever's coming up, physiological sensation, thoughts, feelings, memories, material, through somehow that eye fixation in a place that is kind of finding some keyhole mm -hmm. through a vi through visual stimulation of what needs attention. Yeah? Yes, Am I on track basically. That? Okay. So yeah. on the one hand, that can be activating... And is the deactivation part the expression? Is the exposure. The, the ex like what? Yeah. What is the, what is providing the deactivating, right. regulating signal? Yeah. Once they're getting activated. Yeah, and I would also add to that because I know that EMDR has a lot of preparation in order to do safeguarding right. and making sure that the client is, you know, is is ready, is to, ready do. to do it. Um, and like, how do you maintain someone being like not heading towards ab reaction or flooding right. when they're doing this? So there's so take your time to unwrap. No, no, no. There's <laughs> quite frankly, that's what I had heard about the the caution around brain spotting is what I heard out there. Well, it's interesting because I actually the feedback I usually hear from clients is EMDR is actually more flooding. Okay. 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 So, uh, and what I think is happening there is I think actually the movement is activating too much material and uh, okay. people are getting overwhelmed where the fixation 
you know, and the client has control. They can look away, they can pause, they can take a break. And there are techniques within brain spotting like vergence where you like might move the pointer further away and then up close and then further away and up close. Or there's one I learned called wave spotting where, you know, I have the one pointer, I should have brought my pointers out. I have the one pointer here, I use two and they're fixing their gaze here. And then I have one in the background going very slowly in an arc at 180 degrees. There are, similar to like nine gamut, right? There are techniques that I think, which is interesting because nine gamut actually, you know, came from EMDR. Right. There was a time when EFT practitioners and EMDR practitioners were actually sharing a lot of information and collaborating in the early days. Um, so I do think we have protocols for if someone's feeling too activated, how to de-escalate them. Mm -hmm. And as far as laying the foundation to do the work, interestingly, it's often EFT or Be Set Free Fast that I teach clients first um, so that they have that in the event that like after the session, let's say more stuff comes up or they're not feeling totally grounded yeah. or in the early days before I really knew all those extra techniques in brain spotting, I might tap and I still have clients who like tapping at the end of the brain spotting session just to get, you know, more calm and back in their bodies. So you also can, I think, get creative with how you utilize things together um, to, if, if you feel like the client really needs that. Mm -hmm. So, so would you say that brain, sp I mean, I'm acting out of not knowing, so that's why I'm asking. So it's sounding as if, for lack of a better word, let's just say that in the EFT gamut of techniques that we have, there are ones that we're going to use to really hone in on, for example, a particular traumatic memory. Mm -hmm. Would that be that brain spotting would be a tool that's used in the midst of other things? Or would somebody just have brain spotting techniques, which feels like we're just jumping right into the fire, so to speak, and some people will just do that yes. as opposed to it being used amongst other. I'm just trying to get a sense of that. Both. There okay. are people, there are people who will exclude, I mean, just like anything else, people that only use CBT, right? There are people who will only use brain spotting okay. and then maybe their initial session or two is more the intake and going over the history and creating an alliance. And then we're going to jump right in. Okay. Um, some people like myself to tend more to do some of that front loading work, give them an emotional self-regulation tool like EFT, work with that a little bit until they get the hang of it and then get into the brain spotting. But okay. every client is different. And to me, um, I'm not one of those people who likes to just have one tool. I like having a giant toolbox. And sometimes one particular technique lands better than another. And, and with many of my clients, it's different every time. Like, what do you what do you what do you want to work on today? What do you think is going to be the most helpful? Brain spotting, tapping, something, NET, something else, you know. And often I'll let them decide. If not, I'm muscle testing or checking my own awareness around what's going to be the most effective tool for today to work with this issue. Okay. Do you have a preference or sense other than the client's choosing, right? When you might be using EFT and for what versus brain spotting? I'm just kind of yeah. I do. I do. It's, it's just sort of intuitive. I don't know how thought out it is. Yeah, I just sort of get the hit, like yeah. brain spotting. Yeah. That seems like a, I think particularly um, there are times when like if the client is not great at being able to identify their internal experience, they don't have the words for the emotions or they're super disconnected from their body. And they're like, I don't know what I'm feeling in my body. I, you know, like when there's less kind of material that they can name and they, they maybe don't have the insight, then I may tend to go to brain spotting just because I know, you know, David Graham talks about how when we're doing, it's so unstructured. Once you've got it set up and the person's looking, you're so non-directive as the therapist, you're taking a back seat. The client's cognitive mind is taking a back seat. We allow the person to get subcortical, meaning like, those other parts of the brain take over. Yeah. So there doesn't even, sometimes there's no talking at all. A person can be processing totally silently. Um, and I like that because I think that that gives us access. I mean, we're getting into the trauma capsule or cone yeah. or whatever we're calling it, right? We're getting access to that material. And sometimes words are going to pull someone out. They're going to get them back in their you know, prefrontal cortex or their left brain analysis. 
you know, and that's going to maybe not allow them to go as deep as they could if we were just being quiet and non-directive. So that piece is different where I think EMDR and EFT probably are a lot more directive on the therapist's part. He says we're in the tail of the comet. The person's brain is the head of the comet and we're in the tail of it just following where it goes. We trust the process. Uh, so I am assuming that you have to be a licensed mental health care professional to train in brain spotting? You would think that, but that's actually not true. Okay, let's talk about that. <laughs> similar to EFT, similar to EFT. Interestingly, David did not want to restrict it to just licensed mental health people. So uh, mostly that's who I've seen when I've been in workshops. But, um, but as far as I know, and maybe this has changed, but from when I got certified a few years ago, you didn't have to have a license. Um, obviously, there was a lot of precautions. Same way you guys in your trainings talk about scope of practice and things like that. Um, but there are other kinds of practitioners that are using brain spotting. Though, like I said, I think the vast majority are licensed. Okay, okay. that's useful to know. And do you know or how soon to be. Our, like our therapists, you yeah. know, our associates at the rehab that I supervise, they're yeah. all trained in it. And I feel fine with them using it with my supervision. And what is the, what is the training and certification look like? So with um, you, there are different levels: level one, two, three, four, and then all kinds of different specialty master classes, things like that. So I believe to get certified, you have to do level one and two, which are each a very full three day workshop each um, that goes all day, and you do a lot of experiential. You pair up with someone, and you get worked on. You work on them. And then to get certified, you have to have five or six consultation sessions with a, with a certified trainer. Um, so people who have specifically gone through in-depth training with David. And um, you have to have at least 50 sessions doc and you document. There's a session tracking form, mm -hmm. um, pay some fee, and then it's all reviewed. Um, if, if your consultant signs off, um, because they kind of like do like a, not a real session, but the kind of a practice session, but like with you, um, then you can become certified. Okay. Yeah, that's very okay. very similar to our, our EFT certification program. Mm -hmm. And do you know um, what research there is on on brain spotting? There is some. There mm -hmm. hasn't been, and again, not like maybe at least ten studies or so. And I know some of them maybe have been foreign language as well. Um, because brain spotting is all around the world. I was really surprised. Um, I think just David hasn't put a lot into marketing and stuff because when he showed up at ASAP and I found out that even the like the brain spotting international Facebook group had like eleven thousand practitioners in it. and and in the and it had been around at that point for seventeen years. And I was like, how have I never heard of this? Right. Um, so it is around the world. Um, mm -hmm. There and there are trainings happening all over the world. So it is pretty pretty vast. Um, and so there has been some research in some other languages and, and some. I think he, that hasn't been his emphasis. You know, it's been right. yeah. he's a clinician. He's like, I'm not a researcher. I'm not yeah. interested in doing that. Um, but there have been some studies that I'm not as expert on, but you do learn about them in level one training um, and they are out there. And I think that I would imagine there's enough practitioners that want to see it grow and become evidence-based. Yeah. Um, so there's probably more movement towards getting more research, especially now that we have MRI studies and right. all these cool things, you know, like the energy psychology folks are doing. How much time do you put aside to do if you're gonna if you know you're gonna work with someone and do brain spotting on an event? How much time do you give it? Give it you give it a full session or yeah? I do. Yeah. Um, and there are actually like my trainers, uh, Lisa Larson's, who I trained with. She she does hour and a half sessions, yeah. and I can see why because yeah. some, you don't know. It's a bit like Pandora's box. You don't know what you're going to be bringing up. The worst thing is to feel like your client is still at a like high suds level and you've got 10 minutes toward the end of the session. I mean, you kind of learn the tricks of like, okay, I got a chicken by like quarter of or 10 of. And if they're still, you know, uh, overly activated, maybe I'm going to do one of these, you know, techniques or maybe I'm going to have them tap or you know, you kind of have to be on top of like what's happening and checking in with your client. But yeah. And if we don't start by like quarter after or 20 after with the setup stuff, right. then I don't want to start at 30 minutes in because I oh, feel sure. like okay. not going to be enough time. So I'm I'm still curious, I guess still not quite satisfied yet. I, I 
I'm imagining it easily as a way in to discover material that needs to be worked on. Yes. I'm still not clear on the regulating aspect or the resolution aspect, because I'm like, like, I just want to understand further. I can understand, for example, a bilateral oral stimulate, you know, you know, audio stimulation, um, mm -hmm. having a calming effect. Yes. What else is happening between the practitioner and the recipient once they're eye gazing, once they're tuning in, once they're experiencing whatever stimulation they are physically, emotionally, cognitively, et cetera? Like, where is the intervention part other than discovering and the finding and having them tune in part? That That's the part like it's still not quite yeah, you, there for me yet. Well, that's the thing. And that's what's always weird for practitioners new to this is like, you're not actually doing anything. Okay. Your I hear presence, that. Okay. Your presence, you're creating the container. You're helping them stay within their window of tolerance. Right. And you might, if they're getting super dysregulated, you might pause. Let's look away from this. Let's talk right. about what's coming up. Right. Like we, we can do that, yes. but it, it, it is the technique itself. It's the fact it's not just that you're doing the auditory, you're doing the visual. Right. So you've already. Act, so it's almost like the equivalent of looking at the spot and getting the music going is the equivalent to doing this. And tuning in. And no, also, and, also and releasing. releasing okay. the that is the releasing. So, so it's okay. the same as the EFT. OK, that's yeah. that's an interesting perspective. Yeah, that, that's really interesting. Yeah. That's how it that's how it is to me. Someone else might say something different, but right. my my experience of it is the processing is organically happening. I don't have to direct it. I don't it's almost like what psychedelic, you know, stuff okay. is doing, right? It's a similar mm -hmm. concept. You know, you're accessing the trauma material, all right? And and you're letting it unfold organically. Okay. okay. You are there to support if needed. Yeah. So that becomes a bigger part. Right. I'm sorry. That becomes a really big part of this is providing a safe container. Right. And and all the different ways that that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So just like just like EFT, we would never suggest that someone do a trauma a process of trauma by themselves. You you couldn't do brain spotting. Well, there's a good, you actually can self spot. Okay. You so can. let's let's ask yeah. you about that. Yeah. Good question. Because what, let's broaden it also and say that brain spotting isn't just used for trauma. Okay. okay. So within brain spotting, you have lots of different setups. You could do expansion brain spotting, which a resource brain spotting. So expansion might be you take a peak experience. You take a moment where you felt, and, and a lot of brain spotting is used a lot. David works a lot with athletes performers, all the things. So it might be like, take that one time when you felt like you gave your absolute best performance ever. What did it feel like in your body? And it's funny, they use a sud scale that goes zero to infinity right. for that. And yeah. then you find the spot that correlates to when you felt at your best and you fix your gaze on that, right? right? So for me, that's similar to matrix re-imprinting yeah, and we're doing future re-imprinting, right? So it has that. So um, you're expanding scale. the okay. positive. If you were to do a double spot, right? There's all these interesting setups. There's a double spot for addiction where like one is everything you love about getting high and all the things and then all the horrible consequences yeah. and you go back and forth between them. So you're yeah. creating some new neural pathways. Very you could cool. double spot an activation point, which is what I described to you and a resource spot, which correlates to, is there a spot in your body where you feel more grounded, neutral, or calm? So then they can pendulate between the two and titrate themselves. Oh, I'm getting overstimulated here. Let me go over here for a minute. Okay, I'm feeling calmer. Now I can tolerate going back over here. So, I mean, there's a lot of different nuanced setups where you can actually work more with emphasizing the positives. You can work, people will talk about having a God spot, you know, like, a particular spot where it seems like every time they look at that, oh God, I feel like myself again. You know, I, I feel connected to oneness or God or whatever that is, right? Um, so there's lots of different um permutations, and there's this openness, I think, amongst the David really wants us to experiment and not hold firm to the setup, you know, if we have an intuitive sense that um trying this other thing might be helpful. Right. That's how we deviated from EMDR in the first place. Yeah, yeah. That's helpful. And I see where memory reconsolidation, working with that pendulation as well, can be a really yeah. back and forth useful tool as well. That's interesting. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So 
how can people find out about you? Do you work with, with clients on over Zoom in person? How is it that you? Yes. Yes. So I work with people. I do both coaching and therapy um, and work with people in the state of California. I'm working on getting my license in Oregon as well. Um, and can, yes, do work with people online and in person here at my office in San Francisco. Um, uh, I have a trauma healing center called firebird-healing.com. Um, our therapists all use brain spotting or EMDR, um, are all trained in energy psychology as well. Um, the rehab I work at is called Avery Lane. I have my own website, adrianapopescu.org. I have a web, uh, podcast. Craig's been a guest on my podcast. So lots of different, I'm all over the place. It's easy to find me. And we'll put that information yeah. in uh, the the uh, down, down yeah down. show notes. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yes, I appreciate that. No, this was great, and you dispelled a lot of really like misinformation I had, and so hopefully this will help people really get a real sense of of what brain yeah. spotting is all about. It's very different, I think, than than some of the other modalities, and yet I'm so blown away and impressed with the results, and for myself too. I mean, I've sat there you know, brain spotting and I've had multiple car accidents and I can feel pain in my body. That I haven't felt for years from like the initial moment of the impact of the, you know, things that were long repressed and, you know, armor under a lot of armor and, you know, all the things. I mean, my own experience with it has been super impressive and I love what we've done with clients, you know, in all the different settings. So yeah, I highly recommend people check it out. It may not be for you. It may not be for your clients, but at least go on the website. There's lots of videos of David talking about how he developed the technique. And um, yeah, I think it's worth worth knowing about. Great. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Really appreciate it.